Hey everybody, it's Chris Eads, Woutini over at GayGamer.net, here with another weekly video podcast. Um, I'm going to start this week off with a little movie review, um, because the husband dragged me to see the latest Paranormal Activity movie, um, which I was not enthused about, uh, since he's dragged me to all of them. And I really only enjoyed, like, the first one, and the second one was okay, the third one was pretty good, but the fourth one was terrible. Um, I just, and, and it had, that was the one that used the Xbox Connect to spy on the ghosts, and it was ridiculous. And it was just not good. And I was bored to tears for the whole thing, it wasn't really scary at all, I was bored. So, I was really happy that he was going to go see this with somebody else, but then the other person made plans to see it with another person, and Frank couldn't make that screening, so he said, never mind, and I had to go with him. But, as it turns out, Paranormal Activity, The Marked Ones, is actually pretty good. Um, I mean, it's not amazing, um, but it's on par with, like, 2 and 3. Uh, it's not as shitty as 4. So, if you were turned off on the series, you might want to give this one a go. Um... It was, it was, it had some pretty scary moments, and it ties into the series a lot, which is weird, because they didn't number it as part of the series, it's a spin-off, but, um, the lead guy was cute, and it had some scary bits, so, uh, worth checking out. Although I will say that, um, we didn't see it opening weekend because our local theater does this really annoying thing. Now they show RPX movies, which have better picture and sound, which is not worth an extra $4 to the ticket price. I'm sorry. Um, and for whatever reason, they showed, like, 90% of the showings of Paranormal Activity were RPX. It's a frickin' handheld found footage movie. Don't even get me started on that nonsense. And it's an RPX. Why? so that they can gouge you and not get the cheaper matinee price. So that a matinee price costs as much as a regular showing. So we waited until the second weekend when they just were all regular shows, and then it was only ten fifty, which is still too much for that movie, honestly. I would have been happy waiting f to rent it off Netflix, but my husband loves these movies, so being a dutiful spouse, I went with him. It's love, what can I say? Um, moving on to video games... Um, oh, first, though, I want to mention, I got a warning from Nintendo on Miiverse, because, um, a post that I had posted on Miiverse, although I didn't get it, I didn't get the warning until, like, like a week or so later, um, after I'd made the post and it got, like, a bunch of likes and a bunch of comments, um, because I spoiled something in a game. They, they didn't delete the post, they just said, hey what you posted could be considered a spoiler by some, so maybe next time be a little more careful and not spoil the game for people, because some people might think this is ruining a surprise. Do you want to know what I spoiled? I spoiled the final transformation of the Wii Fit piggy bank that keeps track of the time you've played it. I suddenly it transformed and I said, oh my goodness, and it said it it turned crystal, which is its final transformation. And I said, that's awesome! So I quickly paused the game, went into Miiverse, and posted and said, look everybody! Final transformation is crystal! That's so cool! Wow! And I got a whole bunch of people commenting saying, wow, that's so cool! Congratulations! Wow! And people were like, you transferred from Wii Fit. You, right? Because that's a lot of time to be playing. And, um, like anyone who starts now isn't ever going to see this crystal piggy bank. So, uh, I mean, unless they keep playing it for, like, three years, um, which is unlikely. So I'm just like, sorry, I spoiled Wii Fit. <laughs> it just cracked me up. Um, but, uh, mostly, uh, what I wanted to talk about this week is the Bravely Default demo, which is... <sighs> On the one hand, it's great. On the other hand, it's possibly one of the worst demos I've ever played. Um, basically, it puts you in a town, you run around the town, people in the town give you a mission, they say, hey, could you go collect, you know, 
ten animal hides. And you say, okay, fine. You go out into the desert, you run around and randomly encounter monsters, killing off the monsters to get those hides to bring them back, and they reward you. The problem is, I was getting my ass whooped. And I went online, and it turns out other people were also getting their asses whooped. And I'm like, what the hell kind of a demo is this? Like, how are the enemies not at the correct level as your characters? And it was really frustrating. And then I was thinking, because I was also thinking that maybe I wasn't understanding the brave and default gameplay thing that they added. It's like this new aspect where you can default and defend and build up brave points, and then you can use your brave points to um, basically attack multiple times. Um, so if it's not a powerful enemy, you can actually just... Because you can also use your brave points and like just use it like two or three times and attack two or three times, but then you can't attack for two or three more times. Like, But if you can attack two or three times and get rid of the enemy, it doesn't matter. Because then you don't have to worry about standing there and letting yourself get hit by the enemy while you're waiting for your brave points to go back up to zero so you can actually attack normally again. Um, so I was getting my ass handed to me, and I'm like, what is going on? Why is this game so hard? And I'm like, am I not understanding this brave default aspect of the battle system? Um, and because there's no tutorial. Like, it does not really tell you how to do anything. Um, which is also frustrating. Um, so, and there's no manual, because it's just a demo. So, you're kind of just, like, doing what you can do, and I was told that the enemies are basically for when you're about level 5. And it's true. I basically just hovered around the outside of the town, I would fight a couple of enemies, or actually, I would just do one battle, it would basically almost demolish my entire team. I'd run back inside, save at the, you know, sleep at the inn to come back to life, come back out, battle again, and I just had to keep rinse, wash, repeat, um, until I got to level four, at which point I was able to actually battle these enemies and do a decent job and not get my ass kicked. Um, so once I got to that point, then Bravely Default became a lot more fun. Um, the problem with Bravely Default demos is also that this isn't how the game actually plays. I mean, the battle system is accurate. So, and to, to be fair, a lot of times with RPGs, um, I'm less concerned with the characters and story than I am with the battle system, because it might have the prettiest graphics, but when I go to try to play it, if the battle system is annoying, that's a lot of an RPG. You spend 90% of your time in an RPG battling. So, not good if it's not a good system that you or a system that you personally don't like. Um, so this one is fine, so it's good, but I have no sense of these characters or the story because this isn't how the game actually plays. It's not a fetch quest game. So this demo is really misleading, except for the battle system. And the battle system is not you know, equalized at the start, so I just worry that people are going to try the Bravely Default demo, get their asses kicked, not have a tutorial, feel like there's no story, and be like, oh, to hell with this, I'm not buying this game. Um, but having played the demo a few times, um, I'm actually looking forward to it, and I will probably pick up Bravely Default, because you can actually transfer the progress that you made in this demo into the full game which is a nice thing. That happened with Tearaway on the Vita, and that was awesome to be able to not have to redo the beginning level again. Uh, or in that case, levels. But um, With Bravely Default, um, you can carry over your stuff, which is nice because it normally 3DS demos have a play limit. Uh, this one has... A, usually the bigger games have like 30 plays. So you can only play the demo 30 times, which... Uh, People are like, how dare you put a limit on my demos? And I'm like, well, who cares? Because, like, you play a demo, like, they had a Resident Evil demo. I'm like, let me try the Resident Evil demo. I tried it. I played it one time. I played through it. I'm done. I like it. I'm going to get the game. How many times are you going to play through that? You know? So, um, I never felt like, th I'm like, 30 is more than enough. 
But with Bravely Default, you can save your game in the demo and come back to it again and play some more. So it's been hard because um, normally, you know, being a 3DS is a portable system, I will just pop on a game, play it for like 10 minutes on the train and then turn it off. And now I'm like, but because I know the plays are limited, I'm like afraid. And then 30 is a lot, so I'm sure I won't even get through all 30 of them. But just in case, I've been very paranoid and being like, oh no, I've only got 10 minutes, let me just play Animal Crossing now, and then I'll play Bravely Default for the whole commute home, that way I can get in a good, like, 45 minutes of play, you know, that sort of thing. Because um, once you switch out to another game, then it's like, you have to use up another play turn, and, and eventually you could run out of those 30. Um, Especially since I used up a couple of plays because I quit out of the game to try to find the save data because you couldn't delete your save data in the game. So I tried to delete my save gate data in the system settings, but it's I would have had to delete the whole demo and I was like, well, that's not going to help me because when it comes back, I'll still have to start, you know. So I was like, forget it. I'll just muddle through and try to grind my way up. Uh, and eventually I was all right with it. Um, so I'm very much looking forward to Bravely Default. Um, of course, I still have to finish uh, Zelda first because I can't I can't have any more portable games waiting to be played. So uh, Zelda, it is, and of course Tearaway. Um, and I have been playing the hell out of Tomb Raider. I'm going to try to get 100% completion. I don't usually get 100% completion in games because there's just too much shit to collect and it's too difficult to find it all, but because Tomb Raider has maps of everything, um, I think I might be able to actually pull it off. Um, so we'll see. I might actually get 100% completion on a modern video game, but probably not. But it could happen. Anything could happen. It's a new year, new start. I'm going to do it. Damn it. So I'll see you back next week where I can't promise that I will have finished Tomb Raider 200% completion because I can't probably. I'm, I'm real close to the end, but I don't want to promise anything for next week. So come back and see what I'll ramble on about then. Bye.